All right, so continuing with more gradient operations, what we're going to do is we're going to take this little function of two variables. We have x times this exponential to the power of minus x squared plus y squared. And what we're going to do is we're going to get the gradient of this and then plot the results on MATLAB. And we're going to compare the, the gradient, the function itself, to the vector field. And that is going to show us some of the stuff that we observed in the previous video, but now it's going to be a little bit more explicit. So hopefully this, give, this will give you a better understanding as, of what the connection between the vector field uh, and the gradient of a scalar function is. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to compute the gradient of this function, which is, turns out to be a, uh, a vector field. So we know that in two dimensions we're going to have partial of f with respect to x, that's going to be the x component, and then partial of f with respect to y, that's going to be the y component of the vector field. And in this case, what are we going to have? Well, we're going to have partial of f with respect to x, now we're going to have to use the, the product rule, so differentiate this one first, so that becomes e to the minus x squared plus y squared. And then minus, because we're going to have minus 2x, the derivative of this, times that. So we're going to have minus 2 times x squared times e to the minus x squared plus y squared. And then if we take the partial of f with respect to y, we're just simply going to get minus 2yx times e to the minus x squared plus y squared. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, well, obviously we're going to have the vector field here, so let's call it f, which is going to be the gradient of little f. And then this vector field is going to be characterized by two components. So let's write it in column vector notation. We have e to the minus x squared plus y squared here times 1 minus 2x squared. And then here we're going to have minus 2yx. e to the minus x squared plus y squared. And then this becomes a column vector. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take out our Octave or MATLAB program. So as before, we're going to fill this in with a couple lines of code. So the first one I like to put in every code is just clear all, CLC, and close all, which essentially just closes every figure window that we may have opened from previous runs of the program and clears the memory so that the program runs more efficiently and doesn't clog up the, the RAM in our computer. And CLC just cl basically cleans up the, the command prompt. So if we go to the command window, you notice that it's all blank here. So basically that's just going to be there. And now we go in here. So we go to our editor again. And the first things that we need to do is we need to define our x and y vectors. So now I'm going to plot these functions from minus 5 to 5. And I'm going to choose a, a step size of 0 0.2. Now you might be thinking, why would I choose such a large step size compared to the size of the interval? Well, the reason is you want to be able to see your vectors in your vector field. So if you choose a step size that is too small, you won't be able to see it very clearly. So hopefully, we're going to change this around. We'll see how that compares. But we'll start with 0 0.2. Now we're going to create a mesh. So we're going to use mesh grid to basically create two matrices X and Y, which are what we're going to put into our function. So let's call our function F just Z because it is going to be a surface along the Z um, axis. And the function is defined as follows. So as before, because we're doing matrix operations here, we use the dot and then the, the operation next to it. Now here we're going to write the two derivatives. So this is the partial derivative of the function with respect to x. So you notice that I just wrote it explicitly as I have it here, uh, right here. And then the partial of, of z with respect to y. So I have that function here. And now because I want to create two plots side by side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a surface plot using the surf function. So I put in my x and y matrices and I put my z function and that's going to give me a plot of the function itself. And then here uh, for the subplot, so this is going to appear on the right hand side of the same figure window. 
I'm going to use the quiver command to plot a vector field so I'm going to give it the inputs x and y and now I'm going to have the partial derivatives which are the x and y components of the vector field which is the gradient of the scalar field and now because the vector field is going to look a little bit small I'm going to confine the limits so I'm going to use x lim and y lim to establish the limits along the x and y axis and this is hopefully going to make it easier to see the vector field so once we run the program we run into these two graphs so the one on the on the left here is just basically the function itself so it is just the function x times e to the minus x squared plus y, plus y squared and you notice that it has two very narrow peaks so basically one going down like this and then one going up so basically it looks um, this is actually something that would be r quite common if you had two electro uh, two electric charges just close to each other so if you had a positive and a negative the positive would have this positive potential the negative would have the negative potential they would tend to attract each other now if we look at the at this at the gradient of this basically scalar function you notice that you have a vector field here and now you're going from one of these so basically you're going from here which is all negative here you're going all the way to here so you notice that we observe the same kind of pattern that we observed in the previous video so basically you have a you have a surface that is concave up so basically it is like this so you see the vectors are actually going away from the from the source point which is somewhere here so the vectors are basically pointing away and they get larger as you move away but then they start getting smaller so in this case you actually have you you're total gradient is going to flatten out because the, the function is essentially only defined within this very narrow range here and then it just be basically becomes flat at zero and then on this case what we have is a, we have a function that is concave down and you notice how now the vectors are all pointing towards the center of the source which is over here so basically what you have is all the arrows, all the vectors are going from this source to that source. And this is what you would normally observe in the electric field between two charges of oppo two opposite electric charges, essentially. So if here, this is what you would observe. So this is quite a, an interesting kind of way of visualizing this. And you can see that the, the way in which the arrows are pointing towards either a source point or away from it is basically tells you whether it is concave up or down so that's a really nice property of this now you may imagine that if, if we change this to y we would see the same kind of effect but along the y-axis so we would have these two points just aligned along the y-axis and then you would see the same here but this is just to show you that this is essentially the definition of the gradient in terms of a vector field and in, in the next few videos we're going to talk about a little bit uh, a little bit more about some other operations that can be performed vector fields and what they actually mean from a physical point of view